I want to talk about Fight For It 20. And let's talk about how do those fighters win. You know, I'm going to talk about um, Jacob Paez taking on Shaquan Oliver. It's a championship fight in the amateur division for the 155 title. How does Jacob Paez win the fight? Well, be Jacob Paez. The one thing that the Paez brothers have is unpredictability. Those guys are off the chain, man. Those guys are off the chain. Look, they got some videos out, man. They smoking, they drinking. Don't listen to it. <laughs> look, look, if I was the manager of the Paez brothers, I'd be super high, no pun intended. I'd be super high on the Paez brothers. I'd be super uh, supportive. I do everything and say everything to promote their fights. All right. But I would still tell you, <laughs> don't fall for it. I would, I would be, that's where my integrity would be. If, like, even if I was their manager, I would tell you, don't fall for it. Because number one, they're just like you. They need good opponents. They need good challenges. So they're not going to risk a fight. They're not going to put themselves out there. They, they're getting in your head. This is what the Paez brothers do so well. They get in your head. And the great part about it is you don't know what the, to what degree, what level they're getting in your head. You don't know if they're telling you the truth, or they're telling you a lie, or they want you to think that you're telling a lie, but they're telling the truth, but they're telling a lie. They get you so wound up. They got you so confused. I love it, man. I mean, they tell some of the best stories in the fight game. Honestly, the Pius brothers are doing it up. So, again, how does – Jacob Paez beat Shaquan Oliver. Be, be himself. Be unpredictable. He's he's already proven that he can fight with talented athletes from grappling, from striking. So be unpredictable. Be a mixed martial artist. Fight everywhere. Just don't fight on the other guy's time. That's it. Just don't fight in the rhythm that the other guy is expecting. And how does Shaquan Oliver defeat Jacob Paez? Make him fight your game. You're going to have to control long periods of time using that range, using that length, using that kick. And then when you're able to get them down, it has to be a long period of time smashing, grounding and pounding. You can't hop and, and jump from one position of fighting to the other because that's what he needs. That's what he expects. So it's all about making him slow down, making him fight a boxing match. When you want to fight a boxing match, making him fight a kickboxing match. When you want to fight kickboxing, making him fight grappling. When you want to work grappling, that's all it is. That's all it comes down to is just controlling. And if you look at both fighters, whoever controls the dynamics, whoever makes the fight slow down or whoever makes the fight a little chaotic. Well, that's the winner. That's it. We're either going to have a chaotic re champion retain or we're going to have a methodical new 155 champion. That's how that fight goes down. It's not hard, ladies and gentlemen. It's not hard. That's the way I'm seeing it go down. I've seen both of these teams take on talented uh, quality in terms of their opponents, and they've got some definable wins. Guess what? Nothing to do but to put it out there. Nothing to do but to put it together. Nothing to do but... Let the hands go. And it's just a matter of enforcing that style I just talked about. Working out with Jake Vi uh, um, Valdez this morning. And I, and I, and I told him, Jake, there's, there's going to be every coach that says they got the best kicks. There's going to be every team that says we've got the best punches. There's going to be every fighter that says he's got the best jujitsu or whatever. All of it. Everybody says it. Everybody says the same thing. I got the best, whatever. I got the best. I do. Da, 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 da. So in reality, none of it really matters because I don't care how straight your punches are, how much force you put behind it. You're not the only one. That's, that's the reality of it. You're not the only one. So what's the secret? The secret is the consistency. You have, uh, Paez has the unpredictability. But can he keep it up for five rounds? Shaquan's going to have the more technical skills, but he can he keep it up for five rounds? That's the secret right there. It's the consistency of it. Because there's only so much you can do in the gym. Remember when John Jones kept hitting uh, Rashad Evans with those elbows? Even John Jones didn't know 
to what degree he needed to keep doing that. Even John Jones didn't know how much Rashad could take because even John Jones couldn't practice that live in the gym. He was banking on one thing that nobody at the time practiced these things bare with no, with no, uh, uh, guards on and was used to it. Israel Adesanya did the same thing against, um, uh, uh, pa- uh, um, uh, uh, Costa. When he kicked him in the leg, kept kicking him in the leg because no one kicks you as hard as they can without shin guard on or without a double layer of protection. They want you to feel it and you get used to it so you can learn to check, move your leg or whatever. But nothing feels like, uh, you know, a bare shin cutting into your muscles, knotting up, giving you a contusion on your on your thigh and the muscles swell up and you're walking around for four or five days in the gym, barely can put your weight on your front side and you still have to go through training. Nobody does that because it would be counterproductive. So Israel Adesanya counted on the fact that he had never been hurt to that degree. You see, so he knew he could just let that kick go the same way that um, John Jones knew he could just let that elbow go because Rashad had never been cut in the gym. You know, and still showed up to a fight. If he ever been cut at all, he didn't fight. It's just a reality. These guys were geniuses in that sense that, hey, what do I need to do is take this guy to a place where he's never been impacted before. That's all this. Really, for every one of these fights, that's really the key. Every fight on Fight for It 20, that's the key is take this guy into that rare air. Take this guy into that atmosphere where he's never been able to breathe before. That's it. And if we look at some of the other fights, how does, um, I think there's a kickboxing fight, the, um, uh, uh, Christian McCray taking on, uh, um, uh, Dakota Gray. How does Dakota win this fight? Dakota, you're the guy with more experience. Dakota, you're the guy who's grown up from a kid to an adult to be in this position. It's your time. From a mental point of view, you have to realize you deserve this. You've earned this. One of my favorite fighters to watch. Now, I like McCray, too. I like McCray. It's funny, in, in both these championship fights, I like all four fighters. That's why I'm excited about the show. Um, this is, For me, this is not, oh, I'm going to show up and root for this guy and root for that guy. Man, I'm just looking for a really damn good fight, and I'm not going to be surprised by the outcome because I think both guys in either situation brings it. I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a fan. You know, I got to see Roger Carroll at the last lightning strikes and, um, he was heading up to the, um, to the concession and I wouldn't let him buy anything. I was like, not on my watch. I just happened to be walking by. It's like, not on my watch. You're not buying anything. I said, I got it. And he said, thank you. This is a guy with a lot of credentials. This guy has been on Bellator. This guy that really kind of set the North Carolina pick, uh, uh, that picture off, you know, when, when it comes to jujitsu and mixed martial arts. Um, he's one of the early pioneers. You can't neglect him. And something he said at the end, because I'm always saying that he said, thanks for being a fan. I'm always a fan. I'm a fan of the athletes. I'm a fan of the teams. I'm a fan of this industry. I'm not just a fan of Roger Carroll's. I'm a fan, fan. I'm not just a coach. I'm a fan. I'm a fan first. That's why when I get to these fights, I'm going to enjoy watching these fights. I'm going to absorb them. I want to, I want to get excited with the fighters. I want to cry if the fighters cry. I want to feel their pain. I want to know their joy. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I want to love it all. I want to be, I want to be like immersed in the whole atmosphere. And, and, and you got to learn to put yourself out there like that. It's, it's not something that just automatically shows up. You got to learn to dive deep into this culture and, and realize, you know, what are they putting at risk? These athletes, what are they putting at risk? That's, that's why I love this game so much. Um, but getting back to it, Dakota Gray just used that experience. You know, it's a five round fight. I don't know if you fought in a five round fight before this or not, but take advantage of the fact that McCray probably hasn't because you're, you're the guy with the more experience. You're going to have to turn every round into a five round fight. You've got to make McCray feel like this is his lungs are going to explode, that his heart wants to walk out of his chest and abandon him. 
that's what you got to do. You got to use your experience and take this guy into the deepest side of the ocean and leave him there to drown. You, you really have to have that mindset. If you're there to make a friend, be prepared to lose to your friend. I'll say that honestly, clearly, if you're there to make a friend, be prepared to lose to your friend because McCray on the other side, youthful exuberance, youthful energy. Bring it young man. Uh, uh, in that Ali clip that says rumble, young man, rumble. That is McCray. He is coming to fight. He's coming to hurt. This is what I do like about McCray's style is that he probably hasn't grown into a full-fledged knockout striker just yet. Not quite yet. But when he does, and it could be this fight, by the way. But when he does, he's going to be putting people apart, you know, uh, pe- putting people out. You know why? The reason he's going to be putting people out because he fights like it now. He puts every bit of energy into uh, every strike, every kick, every punch. And the beautiful part about it is coming out of Matrix MMA, they do one thing well, just like every team has this thing they do well, body shot. They attack the body very well. They attack the body very well, and they attack it consistently. And what they do, because they do ta- attack the middle of the body, they don't allow you to kick the legs as much. You're not able to sustain that beat down and kick as much, or you just stop kicking altogether. They're very good. They're very tactical, very strategical about crossing that threshold, letting the hands go. And because you're dealing with pain, see, when you're dealing with the shin guards, you know, the other guys wearing shin guards, you got shin guards, there's some headgear. I get it. I get it. You got some protection there. So you can walk through hell if you want to with that protection on. But when you're getting hit direct to the body, there's no protection. Well, guess what's happening now? You're starting to back up a little bit. Oh, that hurt. And you start backing up and you're going to back up more. And it's like I said in the previous fight, consistency is the key. If McCray consistently hits Dakota to the body, he's going to remind him that he's not a man yet, that he's still a little boy. All right. If he hits him to the body enough and backs him up, it's going to leave that impression on the judges that McCray is doing what McCray has always done. McCray is doing what Matrix MMA does, and that's back you up and hurt you. They don't look for the finish, but they can get the finish. They can get the finish. So, and and I know that this has to be a strategy that, the matrix is working on because they got kickboxing on Saturday night. They've got MMA on Saturday night. They're all over the place as and and matrix. I think in two or three shows back to back where they've had, you know, um, four and Oh, and five and Oh, and six and Oh, you know, like that Todd, that Todd Monroe. Ooh, getting on my nerves a little bit, but that's still my dog. But nonetheless, You've got to take advantage. All the teams do really got to take advantage of them being split minded. But Todd has a staff of coaches. 